Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the Looperman again. Looperman, VLF, Fool, or Edgar, whichever. This is a box demo VLF receiver. This is a very humble model. This is mostly just to show the concept. This is an unmodified Radio Shack 273-1380 transformer in this one. So, uh, whoops. Zoom on this camera sticks. That's why I bought the camera and got it for $7,500. Here, uh, here's a good, here's a good representation of what the little QDPC version is, is like. There's not much to one because it's actually just a simple one transistor preamp. And, uh, get us a picture that we can see. There we go. Okay. Um, we're looking at it backwards. Of course, it's the input side. 11 to 1 step up on the transformer. In this particular case, we need 20 turns, and I'm using number 18 lamp cord. Uh, smaller sizes may work okay. May have a little bit of, of uh, what do they call it? Johnson Nyquist noise. Anyway, may have some resistive circuit noise on smaller sizes. This one not is already substantially noisier than the than the previous version. The previous version using a 40 to 1 transformer modified 273-1380 using large wire, 14 gauge wire and only 5 or 6 turns of it. This being 20 turns and uh, this is actually only 10 turns but it's lamp cord so it has two conductors and up here in the back we can't really see it. The two are wired in series. If you go to wire one of these of course if you wire one out of phase so that they're opposing you'll have no output so it's either a, a go or a no go situation if you wire it right it'll work if you wire it wrong you hear almost nothing and uh, the, this is a PC one one transistor preamp version so of course it drives the Olympus voice recorder it derives its power from the electric power condenser microphone inputs power that's fed into the audio circuit with the mics so it is the recorder, and this is really amazing because one single AAA battery powers the entire system. And uh, I measured it. The recorder somehow steps it up to about two volts. So you have a volt and a half AAA battery in here running a two volt microphone circuit and, of course, the whole recorder with its A, a to D converters and all the other goodies in it. It does a pretty respectable job. This one, I'm not too sure about this one because it's it's quite a bit noisier than the, than the other version. But I think it'd make a good entry level circuit and eventually I'll, I'll post more details on, on how to build these. Uh, the basic circuit that I, that I showed, and it's so old I forgot exactly what, what I did. But the basic circuit that I'm showing on the website does work and you can tinker around with it. Uh, this particular one, it's, it's got the RF bypass capacitors around the, around the preamp transistor so it's, it's got a a pretty good level of RF noise immunity. You see these two little tan colored ceramic discs. The transistor contrast in the video is not very good. Let's see if we can get a better look at that transistor. See if we can get in there and get a good look at it. Okay, it kind of shows where that little TO92 transistor is. Let's see if I can back off the zoom. Yeah, we can hear the motor in there. Can't really... Yeah, there it is. Okay, you can see the transistor. And of course, I'm using one of these cheap volume pots as the adjustable loop load control. Swing the camera back. It's just sitting on the tripod, and I had to kind of finagle it in there to get a good close look. Now we'll zoom back in on the board. And uh, that's pretty much it. Of course, I use paper clips for the uh, substantial wire parts, like to brace the output jack on here and to hold the loop load control. We have the banana, just a pair of typical five-way banana post type uh, jacks here. Since they protrude on the bottom, they're wound with electrical tape to prevent shorting on a metal surface. It forms one side of the support and some paper clip wires forms the other side. And that's pretty much the box demo version. It's a little noisier, so if you're not afraid to wind a transformer, you do well to <coughs> wind you a, a 40 to 1 version. Uh, of course, like I was saying in the other video, you put 40 turns, no, 40 to 1 ratio, get my numbers mixed up here. Put 20 turns of numbers 26 wire close to the core and then put your insulating tape on there and find you an old 48 volt relay, some kind of relay with real thin air thin wire and uh, get that and wind 800 turns on the secondary and of course while you need some thin flexible lead wires bring it out and uh, 
one thing that works good is the old-fashioned ribbon cable. You can take conductors from it, especially if you have some rainbow cable. And I just happen to have a piece here. Got your piece of rainbow cable like this. These are pretty flexible. You can strip wires off of these and use these for lead wires coming out of your transformer. Uh, one trick that a lot of people use is you can take a really hot soldering iron like this weller back here without the or with the dimmer turned all the way up this weller will get hot enough and uh, all you have to do is just touch the magnet wire to the iron and then put a good bead of solder around the magnet wire and the insulation is self stripping it at, at high temperatures and uh, for the hair thin wire that's practically the only way to get a good strip on it is to use heat because otherwise you'll nick it and, and, and break it if you try to use a sharp instrument. 26 is pretty easy to handle so the primary you can scrape it with a utility knife and, and get it good and clean and make the connections but for the secondary I advise just wrapping it around a, about a sixteenth of an inch exposed uh, part of, of your lead wire and get that iron good and hot and just use the heat to make the connection. Of course before you put the final layer of insulating tape on your bobbin make sure that all your connections are made, get an ohmmeter and ohm it out and uh, then put it together, restack the laminations and uh, 40 to 1 works well on that particular core and like with this one you can also use 20 turns and I'm supposing uh, that you could take a big outdoor loop made on a tree with a single strand with a single piece of wire and tent stakes get you a loop that's more than 10 feet on the side and, and this, this uh, unmodified transformers to do pretty well and uh, that's probably about it I've rambled through this is the fourth video today and I'm mine kind of mentally exhausted anyway and this pretty much it the Olympus uh, what's that WS 500M voice recorder supplies the power makes good recordings only thing it doesn't do is record an MP3 and they do have a version that does but the price difference wasn't it wasn't I couldn't justify the price difference, so I, of course, use a uh, audio grabber with the main computer and just rip files from the from the uh, analog audio output from this thing, and it does quite well. And with it being battery operated, no power to the, the AC mains or the AC power system, and no grounds. I don't have any ground loop home, so it's it's practically as good as digital. Just a just a patch cord plugged into the computer is all it takes and audio grabber is a free program that you download off the internet so I, I don't even bother with the mp3 and uh, this unit will will store and play mp3 files so it's a good mp3 player and a, and a great recorder and a great power source for one of these little QDPC type VLF receivers and that's pretty well it. Of course my box demo loops, I love them. They're humble, they're simple to make. They don't cost hardly anything other than the cost of copper wire. That's high enough these days. So that's it for the demo version. That's it for the videos that I'm doing on today, uh, July the 27th, 2010. Thank you people for watching. It's a lot of fun. God bless y'all and bye-bye.